morning, good morning. This is Pastor Toby from the Vine Worship Center. We welcome you on today. We're so excited of the place that we're in right now. We're in the midst of our fast. God has been doing some great and mighty things. And we're also in the middle of our Blessed Life series. And Bishop Maurice will be bringing forth the word on today. So make sure you tune in. You definitely don't want to miss it.
you cry out for help, I will hear you. Hallelujah. And he would say, here I am. The moment that we take our fast to another level and we go deeper beyond what we need, beyond what we want, our children shall be saved. Our families shall be saved. Those we are connected to shall be saved. Those that we are connected to shall be delivered. Let's get past this elementary fasting. Let's get past this baby level of fasting. The fasting that we need is to change the trajectory of our city, our neighborhoods, our communities. Hallelujah. Right now, this morning, you are in this place. You are breaking yokes. You are breaking yokes on this morning in this place. Hallelujah. The fast is for us.
life should be different.
or comes into your home. One of the most important moments is how you welcome that person in to your home. You don't, you don't want to give them a raggedy welcome. Because a, a raggedy welcome gives a raggedy experience. So how you welcome the king into your hearts and into your temple reflects how the king moves in your life. Amen, lights. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Inhabit and fill this place. Let every worshiper begin to say something amazing to him. I can't lead you into this intimate place with God. It's got to be a place that you've been. Listen, sometimes it gets really hard on worship leaders because we're trying to take people to a place that they haven't been throughout the week. But I want to lead you deeper than you've ever been on today. I dare you to lift up your hands. It's a sign of surrender. It's telling the Lord that I am not my own. I belong to you. And when the people of God surrender, the king comes in.
We're here in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Who came expecting something today? Who came expecting something today? I need you to get excited. Hallelujah. He's ready to give you what you want. He's ready to give you what you deserve. Hallelujah. But guess what? He deserves his praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, before we move, before we get yours. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up a sound in this place. Lift up a sound in this place. Lift up a sound.
God said to bring it to your remembrance. You made a vow to God that day. You made a vow to God that day. Things changed in your life. God said, I had to allow those things to change for you to understand you can't do it without Him. You tried, you tried. God said, you can't do it without Him. He said, so you have a decision to make just like you made a vow that day. God is so good. He said, all you got to do is say, God, I'm sorry, but I'm coming back and I'm coming back stronger. I'm coming back, but I'm coming back stronger. God said, if you choose Him, Should I? 
No, I ain't trying to get, I'm trying to be excited about where God's taking me. I don't need nothing heavy lingering in my spirit that's going to take me away from the zeal that I need to have to believe God to get me to that greater place. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, my knees is hurting. I wanted to praise him. I wanted to praise him. Head yeah, glory. I might conjure up a praise from somewhere because he's been so good to me. I can't lay, let pain stop me from giving God my praise. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Y'all ain't ready. I was told y'all. I thought my people was going to have me suit. I needed somebody to tell me, go ahead. Shit, okay. <laughs> nah, y'all too late now. Go ahead, go ahead with that. Right. I, I'm waiting on your glory. But my God. I thank God just to be here another day. Glory to God. We are alive and well. We are above ground. Amen. It's another opportunity for God to complete what he started on the inside of us. See, that's why you got to be excited. That's right. Hallelujah. Every day that you're awake is another opportunity for God to do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. Now, you know we're doing this series, The Blessed Life. Yes, yes. And Jesus. Are you blessed, though? Yes. Are you blessed? Yes. I don't know. See, some people, are you blessed because of what you have or because of who you are? Some people need something monetary and tangible to run around and try to prove to people that they're blessed. Go ahead, that's so true. Oh my God. So true. Hallelujah. When the Bible says, being poor but making many rich, having nothing yet possessing everything. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. So is your blessing contingent upon what you have or who you are? Go ahead. All right. Let's let's let you y'all want to go through the blessed checklist. Let's 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 go through the blessed checklist. Let's go to Matthew chapter five. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So it says, and starting at verse three, chapter five, starting at verse three. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Are you meek? Do you have a teachable spirit? If you have a teachable spirit, then you're blessed. Blessed means fortunate or happy is the man. Amen. Hallelujah. See, so this is going to be the thing that determines if you're blessed or not. If your blessedness, blessedness lines up right here with Matthew chapter 5. Oh, glory. Chapter says, verse 4 says, Blessed are they that, that, that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Then you have to cry sometimes. Huh? Oh God. So I see your faith tells you that trouble don't last always. Hallelujah. And this too shall pass. Amen. You may have to go through a little something, something, but God is going to bring you to a, a, a greater place. Amen. And, and number five, it says, verse five says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Oh, are you humble? God opposes the problem, but give grace to the humble do you qualify for God's grace by walking in humility oh Jesus ain't nobody gonna say nothing that's alright though we, gonna, we about to start talking glory to God and verse 6 says for blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled you know you gotta have a hunger for the things of God you gotta have that increasingly great appetite for you to continue to seek after the heart of God because if you don't have an, ad, an appetite you ain't going to eat nothing Amen. he said man can't live on bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God it's more feasible to eat the word of God than to sit down and eat steak and potatoes Amen. you might have some health issues Amen. hallelujah oh, Jesus hallelujah verse 7 Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you being merciful? Are you treating people the way you want to be treated? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, yes. for they shall see God. 
Is your heart pure? Is your heart sincere towards God? Hallelujah. He said, be ye faithful for I am faithful. You got to have a level of commitment and sincerity if you want to be successful in what it is that God is after in you. Hallelujah. You got to have a sincere heart. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. For blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Do you keep the peace? Or is your life full of chaos? Confusion. Remember, the, the devil, you know, he's the author of confusion. Jesus is the prince of peace. You can only have peace in your life if you got God in your heart. I'm going to tell you one more time. You can only have peace in your life if you have God in your heart. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because everybody ain't, everybody ain't sons of God. No, brother, I ain't, but I'm a child of God, and you act like a child of the devil. Running around here bearing false testimony. You ain't no child of God. You got a lot of hell going on in your life. Glory to God. Oh God. Hallelujah. The peacemakers, they are children of God. As I said, we're all his creation. We're not all his children. Amen. Amen. What did Romans 8 and 14 tell us? For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you being led by the Spirit or your feelings? Who in their feelings today that you can't give God no praise? All these praises going up, you sitting over there looking like a deer in the headlights. Like somebody here to entertain you. And you got all that hell going on in your life. And you can't even pat your foot to, to even try to give God a little something, something. But let something happen in your life. Let calamity befall you. Let an issue come up. Let a crisis happen in your life. I guarantee you, you'll be begging God for a blessing. Jesus. If you know you're in need, you need to praise God like you're out of your mind because you understand that he's going to supply your every need. He ain't going to leave you hanging like Jojo and all them. God going to show up. Jesus. When he show up, you might get a beating though. Because you know he ain't going to bless no mess. You might need some corrective surgery first. God got to work in your heart and in your mind before he work in your circumstances. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I guess I'm going to be excited about this. Oh, glory. Shoot, man, I'm ready to bust a move up in here. Shoot, glory to God. Where we at? Nine. No, with number ten. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Anybody had to go through something? Anybody told you since you started serving Jesus, you act different? Yeah. Anybody called you one of them Jesus freaks? Yeah. One of them Holy Ghost, Holy Rollers, and all this stuff? Have you ever been persecuted? But then it says in verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Anybody been lied on? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. You must have been the one lying on somebody. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Get that tongue right. I'm trying to tell you something. If you want to see God at a level, you better get that tongue right. Amen. Jesus. I swear, hotter than fish grease. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you have to go through something, it's, 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 it's good stuff. Amen. The Bible tells us how to respond to certain things when we're going through. And what happens is we always in our feelings, which makes it, you know what I mean, uh, uh, it doesn't give us the ability to tap into those greater things. Because when you're in your spirit, when you're in your flesh, you totally abandon your faith. And 
and your ability to reason is not there because you're so bound up by your emotions. That's why you ain't hearing nothing when y'all argue. That's why y'all just go back and forth and don't nobody make a point. Because y'all operating in chaos and in emotion. It's only there in the spirit. You ready? You, you can have access to something greater to make to get wisdom from God to make sense out of a mess that's going on in your life. All right, all right. But the Bible tells us in, in Matthew 5 and 12, this is the response to that. What I just read. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. God, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So what you're going through ain't nothing new. The prophets of God been going through it way before you. You sitting around murmuring and complaining. And you don't even realize that in that mess, you're blessed. Because I thought it turned me God, did you? <laughs> it seemed like all hell broke loose again, uh, on me. Yeah, it's supposed to. You're supposed to go through hell. You, you're supposed to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Because the devil mad at you. So what he going to try to do is come at you sideways to make you feel like you're unworthy to walk in the presence of a holy and sovereign God. But he a liar. See, you know, see, look, look, listen, don't entertain no liars because the only thing they're going to do is lie. The Bible talks about when, when, he's, when he lies, he, he speaks his native tongue. For he's a liar and the truth is not in him. You better stop entertaining them lies. You better know that you're blessed. This is the blessed life. Hallelujah. But you got to go through the blessed checklist to make sure that you're blessed and you're not just saying it because it seemed cliche. It sound real good. Yeah, how you doing? I'm blessed. <laughs> Knowing you in debt. <laughs> I'm blessed. Laid up in the house with somebody that ain't saved. <laughs> oh, but I'm blessed. Just hung up the phone lying to them bill collectors talking about you don't live here no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't live here no more. You lying. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I thank God. Amen for being blessed. You have to, you know, I'm going to tell you that you, I, I say all the time that I'm blessed in spite of myself. Amen. Hallelujah. When you, when you've been saved and, and, and you was a filthy rag and God took you and washed you and cleansed you and, you know, and things of that nature, you know, you're grateful for what God has done. I, I, I'm one of few who's made it. So you can't walk a mile in my shoes. You'll probably die before you get to the corner. Hallelujah. But I thank God that he walked with me. That he talked with me. That, I, that he sucked with me. Hallelujah. That he led me and guided me to a greater place in my life. It took a while for me to get this thing too. But I got it. See, I couldn't get it until I got him. Hallelujah. See, the closer that I got to God, the more sin got to be revealed in my life. See, you worried about all this stuff that the devil's showing you that ask him why you keep coming up short with God, but you don't even realize that you're getting closer to God, that you're drawing nigh to God. He said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Come close and I'll come closer. Hallelujah. I need them. I need them every day of my life. Hallelujah. I did this for Pastor Toby. Tell me, man, you was talking. You glowing. She's out good. But hallelujah. I was just, that was just a blessed checklist, y'all. That, 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 that was the appetizer. That was the appetizer. Good. Sister, then Deacon Israel told y'all on prayer, 
Uh, y'all don't need no milk, y'all need some meat. Yeah. Stomach touching your back, about to sue you for non-support. <laughs> ah, man, Bishop, my stomach got my spinal cord in the headlock. You don't even you don't even know it ain't about the sustenance that you take into your body. It's about what you need in your spirit. Anything that consists of life, if you don't feed it, it will surely die. You in spiritual ICU and you don't even know it. That little bit of faith that you got to cause you to hold on to the hem of his garment, you don't even realize that if that's gone, you are done deal. Hallelujah. But I bless God. Hallelujah. Am I going to y'all? Am, am I doing too much? Do your thing. Do your thing. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. hey, hallelujah. You know, I'm going you know, to keep mine a million. But glory to God, we're going to turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. So, my title is, we talk, we're talking about the blessed life. But we're talking about stewardship. This is all connected with stewardship. And we're talking about good being good stewards over your time, Amen. your talent, yes. and your temple. Amen. The three T's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But verse 1 through, I'm going to read 1 through 8. It says, to everything there is a season and a time. To every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to, to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing them. That don't mean, you know, because somebody got bad breath, you don't give them a hug. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, glory. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time of peace. Yeah. Glory to God. Ooh. So Solomon's point in this section is that God has a plan for all people. He has a plan for all people. I just thought about Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, right. says the Lord of hosts. Right. Plans to prosper you not harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Amen? Oh God. See, you're not just here occupying the seat. You should desire a greater work so that you could be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh God. Separate yourself from the world system and stop being so lazy and slothful. Thinking that you're going to reap the benefits of other people's labor. Ah, now I did a gravy train check. And I said all of us. And y'all said. Now somebody got on the train without a ticket. Somebody trying to ride where we riding but ain't putting in the labor to get to where we got to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, and what see in the job, see, I left out a few descriptions in my job as a conductor. See, when I come through, I'm getting ready to do an aisle check, but I was waiting for us to pull off first. See, the conductor don't come through until the train is moving smooth. See, when you think this train is moving smooth, see, that's when you gotta know the people that's in the midst of you. See, that's when it's time to do that ticket check. To see if you snuck on board or you have a reservation. Because if you ain't been through nothing, you can't be on board. If you ain't suffered unjustly, you can't be on board. If you ain't... See, 
there's a lot of qualifying that you needed to do to be able to get on this gravy train. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just ain't going to run. Just, just trying to jump on here because you see the door open. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to listen here. You got to go through something to get on here. Amen. No work. The Bible talks about how the laborer is worthy of his hire and, you know, uh, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Now, nah, man, this ain't about piggybacking on other people's labor. The Bible says if you, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. It's about a work. Amen. It's saying Luke 9 and 62, any man having to put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. And if you ain't fit for the kingdom, you getting off this next stop. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because I ain't riding with no crooks. I ain't riding with no thief. I ain't riding with somebody that got spoils. Lord, I, 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 I love glory. Let, 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 let me go ahead and move. Hallelujah. But God provides cycles of life. Each with his own for us to do. Our own work. We have our own work to do. Amen. The Bible says first natural and spiritual. Just don't pertain this to your physical job. The greater work is in the body. Yes, Amen. Remember when we did the workshop? Uh, Minister Tina told us that it's not about the organization. It's about the organism. Y'all yes, ain't get that nugget? Yes, oh my God. Yes, it's not about the organization. It's about the organism. The body. And although we face many problems that seem to contradict God's plan, these should not be the barriers to believe in him, but rather opportunities to discover that without God, life problems has no lasting solution. You can't do it without him. That's what I'm telling you in plain English. Don't think that you could be successful in your life, successful in your walk without God. The, our, our scripture was John 15 and 5 and it was gone now. Glory. When Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. And he that abide in me and I in him will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. The Bible also tells us that they that build the house without God labor in vain. You can't do it without him. Stop trying to convince yourself to believe that you don't need God when you need God in every area and aspect of your life. Right. Woo. Hallelujah. Listen, we talked about here in, in Ecclesiastes 3 about time. Timing is important. You can't Continue to go through life with no concept of time. That's so true. That's why you always late. You ain't no fashionably late. You ain't got no concept of time. That's what you ain't coming through the door looking good. Hallelujah. You gotta be the last one to show up. What's that all about? That's corny. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All experiences listed in these verses are appropriate at certain times. Amen? Yes. If you try to do everything at once, you'll burn out. That's true. That's true. And that's when you're doing too much and not trusting God to do anything. Yes. 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 The Bible says in Proverbs 3, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Tell somebody, stop capping. You're doing too much. Leave some room for God. Now John 10 and 10 tell us that the enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. You don't think that the devil trying to steal your time? You don't think he's trying to kill your zeal and destroy your faith in God? So that you can lean to your own understanding. Uh -huh. Oh glory. Your time is everything. Yeah. Amen. You do 
worried about your money and not your time. But if you think about it, you can't have no, you can't make money if you don't respect time. Because in order to make money, you gotta you, 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 you gotta work. It's gonna take some time for you to accumulate things so that you can get paid. Oh Jesus. The secret to peace with God is to discover, accept, and appreciate God's perfect timing. God won't do what he do when he do it. You can't make God do nothing. I don't care. You can kick your heels off like Patty LaBelle, roll all over the floor, and whatever you want to do, it ain't going to force God's hand to move on your behalf. Because if God don't care about you know, what you're doing, amen, God looking at your heart. And if you ain't you ain't a good steward concerning other things, what make you think God gonna give you something because you're crying about it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it worked for other people, didn't it? Wow. My kids hungry. <laughs> we don't know what we gonna do. I can't get to work. I ain't got no gas. Don't you got a job? <laughs> yeah. So why you ain't got nothing? <laughs> well, you know, I had to do this knowing you going to eat out every day uh, at work. You spending all this money, you ain't cooking nothing. You blowing your money on every and anything. And then you're going to cry about it. And it's your own mistake. Yes. If somebody gave you something, it still wouldn't change your situation because it's your mindset that needs to change. See, if you think poverty, you got a poverty mindset, you're going to always think. Yes, that's right. Yes. Hallelujah. But we got to appreciate God's perfect timing. Yes. The danger or error in this is to doubt or resent God's timing. This can lead to despair, rebellion, Oh God, oh moving ahead without praying about it. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh moving ahead without praying about it. Some of y'all been lying on God. You ain't heard nothing. When has God spoke to you with your own voice? Oh, Bishop, I, I heard from God, Bishop. Uh, it, it, the Lord told me that the Lord ain't tell you nothing. Your heart told you that. It's something that you greatly desire to do, but God didn't release you to do it. So being that your desire is so great for it, now you're having these illusions that God is speaking to you when God ain't said nothing. He told you to be still and know that I am God. I will open the appropriate door at the appropriate time. Now be honest. How many of you done stepped out ahead of God? Discovering later Wait a minute, hold up. You step out ahead of God thinking that it's an opportunity to later discover that it's not your time. We're talking about time, y'all. You stepped out. You thought it was a, you seen an open door. You seen an opportunity. You went through the door. You was expecting greater things to happen, which they didn't because it was just an opportunity, but it wasn't your time. When Jesus did the miracle in Canaan of Galilee, when they ran out of wine and his mother came to him and said, they ran out of wine. He said to his mother, he said, he said, woman, why do you involve me? He said, my time has not yet come. And the only reason why he changed that water into wine because he honored his mother. Oh, Jesus. Huh. If we ought to be Good stewards. We have to manage our time. Remember, Minister Tina so told us something that you drop us some nuggets at that workshop. When she told us, she said, God doesn't want your spirit.
your time. He wants your precious time. Don't go throughout your day and then get home knowing you exhausted. Talk about you going into prayer. Stop lying. You're going to sleep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You ain't said a whole bunch of nothing to God. The Spirit make intercessions for you, not your story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he wants your precious, your precious time, not your spare time. Right. Amen. Amen. Woo. My God. Remember Jesus told his disciples? He said, can you not pray one hour? And then he told them, that's, that's the significance of this prayer. I mean, this prayer, this fasting. Prayer and fasting go hand in hand. And what did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, pray. So that you don't fall into temptation. But when he came back from praying, what did he do? He found them asleep and he got frustrated. He said, are you still sleeping and you're resting? Now I'm paraphrasing them, but it's lining up with the scripture, I promise you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I say that to make this point. When are you going to start sacrificing your time like you're supposed to and stop sleeping on the job? See, and when Jesus, let me go, let me go back because I had a, I had a nugget I wanted to give y'all. When Jesus went back and told the God to disciples, are you still sleeping and resting? Jesus wasn't inquiring as to what they were doing. He was requiring something for them to do. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. You can't sleep on the job. Use your time wisely. Amen. And then the thing is, you don't even realize that you just want more write up from losing your job. Oh, you know, I'm my HR people up in here. Glory to job. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But look at somebody and say, tighten up. Tighten up, bro. Tighten up, bro. Hallelujah. Be a better manager of your time and God and give God the time that he desires. Amen. And stop treating God like some side piece or some sugar daddy. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The only one push up on him when you want something. Trying to come up in here looking good, paying your tithes and stuff. You looking good. Ain't nobody looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Treating God like you think because you going to, you know, throw a little something around. God going to be impressed with it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to use what you got to get what you want. That's the habit that God's trying to break you from. Yeah. You've always used what you had to get what you want. Instead of being faithful and, and diligent and committed unto God and giving God the time that He requires of you. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go to talents. We're going to talk about your talents. And Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Y'all ain't got to go there. I'm just going to read it real quick for the sake of time. What time is it? Okay. Jeremiah 1 and 5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Yep. And before thou cometh forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Everything that you are, God designed you to be. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus. Adequately equipping you with every gift and talent for every good work that he's ordained for you to accomplish. See, you're so used to being overlooked, it's hard for you to believe that God gave you something valuable. But I'm here to tell you today, you got it. God has no respecter of person. Amen. 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 You in this body of believers, you know, you here to, you got something. 
Amen. And that's the very thing that God is after. That's why you got so much hell going on in your life right now. Because you're hard-headed and disobedient. And God's just trying to simply get your attention. And you aggravated with God. Because he keep blocking you from hanging out on Friday nights. Stopping them booty calls late at night. And all this stuff. You frustrated. God said, you don't need that. You need me. Got to learn how to separate yourself and consecrate yourself unto the Lord. That's why you got to fast and pray. And Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just. <laughs> Man, go ahead. You just have to fight with the distractions that try to hinder you from tapping into those talents. Amen. God's giving it to you for the edifying of the kingdom. The devil wants you to use it for the world or for self-gratification. But what you need to realize and understand that it's not about you. Amen? It's not about you. Somebody say, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be trying to get more. You should be working with what God has already entrusted to you. Because see, when we got a little something, something, we always desire to have more. We so greedy. We so greedy. Work with what you got. Amen. Why did everybody want to have more when you ain't being, you know what I mean, when you ain't, when you ain't doing what you're supposed to. Amen. Hallelujah. You should be working with what God has already entrusted to you. According to Matthew 25 and 15, he gives to each of us according to our ability. Our own ability. Amen. You have a specific talent, a skill set. Amen. It's time to be a good steward and use it for the body because at the end of the day, you're going to have to give an account to God as to why you didn't do what was right but what you had. Look at somebody and say, use it, or lose it. use it or lose it. See, I don't know about you, but I want to hear God say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. I don't want to be well done in that lake of fire. But for being disobedient and not working with what God has given me, amen, to the edifying and glorifying of the kingdom, but for self-gratification. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have to be half crazy thinking that God is going to bless you with more when you don't even believe what he's already given you is enough. Wow, that's good. That little bit of stuff. That's good. What's this? You pick up a little nothing? Oh, what's this? You can't do nothing with this. And you don't even realize that that little nugget is going to lead you to something greater. Learn how to appreciate the little things. Stop being a murmur and a complainer. God is trying to transform and change your mindset, your attitude. You, if you're going to have an attitude, have an attitude of gratitude. Be appreciative of what God does in your life. Because guess what? He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. That's why it's hard for you to believe. Because you're still hard-headed and disobedient. And you can't understand why God keeps on doing what he's doing in your life. He does it because he loves you. Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. The scriptures tell us that he's a God of more than enough. Amen. And that he will supply our every need according to his riches and glory. The struggle is real for you right now. Because truthfully, you're a poor manager. Yeah. I'm sorry, I want I, I don't want to lie to you, you know. I, I, I want to see you do better, and God wants to see you do better. But you're a poor manager. And that doesn't make you a good steward. It's time for you to get everything in order in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your body, in your house, on your job, in your finances. It's time to line it up and this time do it God's way and not your way. Because the Bible says in a man's own eyes, his ways are always right. right. You got to 
break the way you do things and start cleaving to the way that God wants you to do things. The way you do it, it's not working. That's why you still caught in a vicious cycle. You ain't gonna never get ahead with your bills. Wow. You keep convincing yourself that, okay, 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 cash time. Uh huh. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put this to the side. You know what I mean? I got this going on. You know what I mean? It don't never work the way you say it's gonna work. Cause guess what? You ain't nothing but a hustler. And there ain't no future in hustling. Hustle, hustlers get hustled. And you become a prisoner of your own devices. So your mind trying to convince you of something that you know you've constantly done and didn't work. So that means you crazy. Oh, oh, Jesus. They said if you do the same thing and expect different results, that's insanity, right? Uh, you crazy. You just, ain't, you, you just ain't on the wagon. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But it's time to line those things up. It's time to do things God's way. And I promise you that everything will work out. Amen. Amen. Yes. The Bible says that he'll do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Amen. Did I say, did I say exceedingly? Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. And I heard you over there. No deposit, no return. No increase if you don't release. Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody want the increase, but ain't nobody releasing nothing. Uh -oh. Hallelujah. Now I need God to do this. God, oh, if you lucky, God ain't Janet Jackson, because he would have hit you with the, uh, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, bless the living God. But yeah, so we got to give, the Bible says, to give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about your temple. I'm, I'm just going through these things, just touch on it a little bit, hoping that I shed a little illumination, you know, on these on these uh, particular things, you know, to try to assist you and help you to get to that greater place in your walk. Because I'm telling you that God is requiring so much out of us. Remember, too much is given, much is required. Amen. You can't just think that because you bust up in the piece that you qualify for something. Amen. You got to put the work in and you got to get into a place and in position to be blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're talking about your temple. Amen. I, I got you, baby. I got you. Glory. And 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you if anyone destroys God's temple God will destroy him for God's temple is holy and you are that temple That's right. man listen if we can't take care of ourselves how can we ever see anything else through glory to God you look the part but what physical or mental challenges are you having that we don't know about or see this pertains, you know, to our natural bodies as well as where we meet in this place among the body of believers. Amen? Yes. Oh, glory. Amen. Now, from, from other parts of this epistle, it appears that false teachers among the Corinthians taught unholy doctrine. Such teachings tend to corrupt, to pollute, and destroy the building, which should be kept pure and holy for God. We have a responsibility here as good stewards and we must stay on our posts and watch as well as pray so that the ravenous wolves don't come in here and devour us. We got to watch each other's back. We are part of a body. This ain't about no individuals. This is about a body. This is about a court. This is a corporate thing. When God blesses us, he's going to bless us corporately. Remember, the blessing, you know, the oil came down Aaron's head, down through his beard, onto the body. Amen? We're responsible for each other. If you may not have connected with people or whatever, as of yet, you may be new here, but you know what? We are significant in each other's life and significant in each other's walk. Amen? 
So we got to make sure, you know, we don't let we don't let nobody come up in here, you know, stunting, perpetrating, gossipers, backbiters and backstabbers. That stuff causes division, causes strife. Amen. And tear the church asunder. We don't need that mess in here. We want to make sure we locked in this thing down because we're going forward. We on the gravy train. We riding. Is we riding? Is we riding? Shoot, that's what I'm talking about. And we got to make sure that we stay on our post because we don't know who the devil got on the payroll. Amen? You better watch out for them infiltrators. Glory to God. Those wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen? You got to know them that labor among you. See, and what happened is, you know, we get too comfortable, too close and comfortable with demons. Your demon is probably so emotionally attached to you that you have great difficulties letting them go. Ah, uh, nah, that's my best friend. You know, but, but your best friend ain't saved. Your best friend's still hanging out. Your best friend's still drinking. Your, your best friend's still turning up and still trying to get you to turn up. How much, how much resistance that you think that you're going to have before you finally give in. Jesus. Cussing at you and all that. Ah, uh, you already know. You acting all bougie now. Ah, uh, you know we used to do the turn out. Blah, blah, blah. No, I don't turn up right now. I'm in a different place with God. Amen. And what happens is, you know, until you get that toxic person out your life, you're going to continue to have issues. Because what's happening now is they on the payroll and the devil sent them to keep you in a place and stifle your growth. Oh, God. To, oh, my God. Hallelujah. And then what happens is you're so protective of them that you won't allow them to be loosed out of your life because you're so emotionally bound by it. And you don't realize that they're on assignment to destroy you. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Listen, Pastor Daniela just, just hit that thing on the head. Huh? That's a soul tie. And it has to be broken. If you want to get in that greater place, I'm telling you, sever them ties. Glory to God. Oh, my God. But to those who spread loose principles, which render the church of God unholy, bring destruction upon themselves. God is going to deal with them. Amen. The battle ain't mine. It's the Lord's. I learned to cast everything over. And though sometimes I get a little vexed in my spirit, I ain't going to front. You know what I mean? Now, initially, our response and situations is emotional and it's with anger. You know what I mean? So you got to learn how to take a step back and say, you know what? I'm not going to let him take me there. I'm going to go ahead and give this thing to God and at the same time, I'm going to keep my peace. Hallelujah. I'm not compromising my peace. See, that's my word. Uncompromising. I'm not going to do it. Hallelujah. But I'm going to continue what the thing is you know, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to stay focused on the greater task. I'm going to continue to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to let myself get tied up in civilian affairs. Amen. 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 Christ by his spirit dwells in all true believers. The Bible said in 1 John 4 and 4, for greater he that is in me than him that is in the world. Christians are holy by profession and should be pure and clean both in heart and conversation. If your heart ain't right, your mouth ain't right. And James, he told us that James 3 said that, told us that salt water and fresh water can't flow from the same spring. You can't praise God then curse man. Hallelujah. And remember, the reason why the Bible talks about your heart because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So what's in that? What's in your heart? Gonna come out from that hole under your nose. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we got to, you know, make sure that, you know, that our words are seasoned with salt and full of grace. Amen. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. You walk in this thing with Christ. Walk circumspectly as wise. Don't compromise. You ain't got to show everybody that the, that the fact that you in Christ, you still ain't soft. That's why you still get into arguments. You know, I used to always say I'm thug fizzle for Christ's jizzle. But I still keep it at a level. You know what I mean? Sometimes I might have to do what I was ordained to do. Lay hands. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. But no, man, I, you know, I, I just, I just... I just love God. I keep it at a level. Stay mindful of who I am and whose I am. Amen. Amen. And don't, don't let myself get too carried away with certain situations and circumstances. Yes. Amen. 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 One who is deceived, who deems his or herself the temple of the Holy Ghost, yet is unconcerned about personal holiness or the peace and purity of the church. Oof. Mm. One is deceived when he or her deems themselves the temple of the Holy Ghost, yet is unconcerned about personal holiness or the peace and purity of the church. You can play something. I'm about, to, I'm about to finish. Get yourself together. God called us fast so that you can take dominion over your mind and your flesh. It's time to stop kidding yourself, saying that you're going to do it this time when you know that you don't have the strength to. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. My prayer is that God will strengthen you even now. Hallelujah. That you can control your flesh and not allow your flesh to control you. You've been fighting a losing battle. It's time for you to win. It's time for your victory. You're a winner. I know sometimes it's easier to walk away. But you're not a quitter anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to stand strong and firm and fight the good fight of faith. And let God bring you out and bring you through. Amen. Give it to God. He said in this word, for when you are weak, then I am strong. It's time for you to decrease and let the spirit of God increase. Turn down that plate and turn up your spirit. Amen. You are so off course regarding what you need to do for you that you can't identify with how the enemy has you on a self-destructive path to bad health and addiction. I used to be an addict. And I'm mindful of that. And I know that I'm one drink and one drug from where I used to be. What's your drug of choice? What you strung out on that you can't get free from? I don't know about you, but now I'm high on the most high. God's been good to me. Hallelujah. He's been good to me. You'll struggle loving God if you can't love you. It's time to clean your temple so that God has a good place to dwell. Don't invite him into a messy and unorganized place. Or don't ask him into dysfunctionalism. Clean up. Be very serious about taking care of yourself. Your life may very well depend on you. Facts. I love you with the love of God. Do you love you? Take your
care of yourself. Fish them out. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Come on. Hallelujah. What a word. Hallelujah. My God. Y'all, it's giving time. Are you excited to give on this morning? Woo! Doors opening up to our ministry like never 
before because of our giving, God, corporately, God, and personally, Father God. We thank you on this morning, Father God. We ask that you bless every seed, God. Bless every person, God, that is giving, God, and those who could not give, God. Prepare their hearts for next Sunday, God, throughout the week, oh God, to prepare to give, God. Because, God, we know, God, that you love a cheerful giver, God. Worship Center, and I was speaking this morning with um, Minister Renette, and I said, you know, it blesses our heart when we see, we say we're the vine, and we have all these branches, and the branches should be doing something for the kingdom of God, amen? So I just want to thank God for Sister Liz yesterday using her resources and getting all those blankets out to the women and the children and the shelters, amen? And I said, you know what? I said, we need to go down OBT. She said, I ran out of blankets. She said, but I'm going to get some more. Amen, amen, amen. And then I also, you know, I'm just so thankful and proud of Sister Renette. They did something, her and Mr. Tracy, with the new organization they're part of. And they did an outstanding event yesterday for fathers and sons. And it was so nice. And they had different speakers there. You were there for Trace like I was there. Amen. No. <laughs> Amen. But this is what ministry is. You don't have to wait for us to tell you to go do something, right? If God placed it on your heart, just start getting it done. And we just say, just don't embarrass us when you're out there. Amen. Amen. So if you do not have that, it's also in the hallway. If you scan that, that will actually connect you to our church app that has all the things that are coming up on the church app. So that way you can stay connected. Caesar, can you go to the next one for me? Amen. Who has been enjoying the 9 p.m. prayer every night? I'm telling you, it's been powerful. I have just been floored by some of y'all. I said, where is this coming from? Amen. So it's, uh, let me tell you, it's 15, 20 minutes, but it's something about us joining together at night to close out in prayer. I thank God for those faithful ones that have been on there every single night. And let me tell you, we close it out this week with a powerhouse of prayer warriors. We got some more people from Connecticut that are going to be praying. We got some of our very own. We also got Pastor Danielle on the docket, amen, for Friday night. So we're excited about that. And then our very own bishop will conclude prayer on Saturday night. And then we'll wrap up everything on next Sunday. Amen. 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 And then we're continuing on stewardship. And this Thursday, our topic is God's view on wealth borrowing and lending and the reason I have lending in there is because God's saying I'm making y'all the lenders not the borrowers and I gotta teach you what it means to be a lender because so often we've been the borrower we don't know how to act now that we're the lender and we have to learn to be a good steward because just because they ask and you got it doesn't mean you're supposed to give it amen so we're gonna teach that on Thursday evening and as we're trying to wrap up our series on the blessed life is there anything else, Caesar? Oh, woo crazy! Listen, we did a series on crazy faith. We've been doing a series on the blessed life and stewardship. And if you've been connected to the vine, you know at the beginning of the year, we always do a pledge of our first fruit offering. So Sister Kayla is going to be texting you the details of that. And on next Sunday, we're coming together with our pledges. You don't have to have the seed, but what are you pledging? But we're saying this seed that you're sowing this year is what are you trusting God enough for and crazy enough to believe? And you're trying to sow a seed specific for that. So we're not telling you exactly what the amount is. It's whatever God places on your heart. We'll start, and you can do it in installments, and it's all the way through the towards the end of March that you have to make that um, commitment. Amen. So if you've been with us for a while, you know about that. 
And then this isn't a slide, but also get with Brother Caesar and Sister Christiana on the way out on um, February 20th. It's also our take back or throwback Sunday. We always do that for Black History Month. And they have a menu of fried chicken, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, cornbread. See, I said, oh, you got it all covered? Well, they got it all set. I said, talk to them today because they fast and they hungry. They all going to sign up for something. Amen. But let's get a little hand clap. Let's stand up. We're about to close out. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for all that was said and done on today. God, you are so mighty. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for showering us down. Father, as we leave this place today, but never your presence continue to be with us until we all meet again and everyone shout amen. Amen and amen. Be blessed.